Hey everybody, it's Debbie O'Neill at Scrap Me Quick Designs and the Let's Learn Cricut Explore Facebook group. And I had a special request to make a, to show you how I made a project. I made these tabletop easel frames for the Houston uh, Cricut meetup that was in March where Ashish came to Houston. And on part of the uh, event was we had these photo props for our decorations and centerpieces for the table and we wanted everybody to grab a photo prop and strike a pose and take a picture so I made these little frames and had them on the tables and someone asked me if I could please show them how did I make them and I used the print and cut feature uh, to do the inserts for where the words were so I'm going to show you exactly how I made the project, which which cartridges I used to do that with, and also how did I do the printing cut so it had this kind of chalkboard look to it. Um, so let's get started. I'm logged into my Design Space account, and I'm going to go into Insert Images. The first thing I want to do is go go into Cartridges, and I'm going to pull up Fancy Frames. Okay. So once Fancy Frames is up, there are two styles of the easel backing on here. So I'm going to click both so I can show you that. And then this is the style that I use. As you can see, there's a lot of different ones, and you would be able, you know, to make your to make your frame uh, using uh, several of these choices. So I'm going to do Insert Images. Okay, and. These are the two backs, and I'm going to go over to layers, and I'm going to change the color so you can see the back better. Okay, now these are the backing that you're going to put on the back of your frame so that then your frame will actually stand up on your tabletop. And as you can see, there's a vertical one, which is the one that I use. And then there's actually one that's for if you wanted to do a horizontal tabletop frame. So this is the one you would pick if you wanted to do it the other direction. And um, this is not the one I use, so I'm going to get rid of this one. But I wanted to show you that there's two styles here. So depending upon which direction you want your sign to go. Um, these would be really cute to make to like a lot of people do like candy bars or dessert bars or whatever at your wedding. You can make little signs that say what those items are. Um, which would be fun, or for your uh, maybe maybe if you're having a large wedding, you have assigned seating, so you have uh, your seat numbers. It could be used for that as well. Anyway, so let's get started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to size this to the size that I I ended up using. So I'm going to go into edit, and over here my overall frame was 5.3 and I ended up changing the height to 7.37 okay so this is the overall size of my frame the backing piece I wanted to be slightly smaller than this so it was easier to match up so now I'm going to highlight the back I'm going to move this over highlight this one and I'm going to change the size on this to uh, the easel part of this was 5, and I changed it to 5 by 7. Okay, as you can see here, I've unlocked this so that I'm able to change the image to the exact size that I want it to be. So now both of these are the size that I wanted them. I'll go back into layers because I cut this out in black, so I'll be able to be consistent and show you that. And then, now this is my frame that I that I worked with and let's go ahead and color it the same colors so I used white for this and the back of this is going to be black okay so once I've got it sized the way that I want it then I can highlight it and go into layers and down here in your panel I want to ungroup these okay so I have the back of my frame, I have the layer, the back layer of my frame, and then I have my uh, fancy part of the frame, the frill part of it, okay? 
Now, when you put these two together, you'll notice that it creates this center cutout. All right. Well, I wanted to fill that cutout with an image that would be the sign part. All right. So how I did that was I inserted a rectangle. I'm going to go into all images and I'm going to search for a rectangle. You can pick any rectangle that you want to pick. I just wanted a plain one. Okay. Now, I took this rectangle and then I know that when I put this on my frame like this, I want to be able to cover this part of the, the cutout. So, I used my rectangle and I actually stretched this. I'm going to unlock it. I actually stretched this so it covered that entire part of the frame. So that when I go to adhere this over the edge of that frame to do the completed project, it's going to cover those these lines. I didn't want this cut out on there. All right. I wanted to be able to, and this was super thin. Let me show you. So when I take this away, this is really super thin. So even if I wanted to show this, I just felt like that, that was going to be too hard to try to adhere the piece to it. So I made it so it fits over that. Okay. So depending upon the shape that you're using, you know, you'll have to kind of fudge with that and see what you want to do. But this is how I made this one. All right. So this layer ended up being roughly, I'm just going to say it's 4 by 6 just to be consistent because that is the size that I made them. So I was really close. That one's 5.9. So now I have a, a 4 by 6 piece. All right, this is going to be your sign part. All right, so for the sign, I'm going to change that layer to black. All right, now I have it black. Now I'm going to add some text. So you can add whatever you want to say. I'm just going to try to do it kind of similar to the way that I had it. And I can go into, once I add a word on here, I can go into the first letter of that word and change it to whatever color I want it to be. And I will continue to add words. And then I'll show you how I manipulated the words. So I just kind of got them all on here. But I wanted to do each word that I'm putting on here, I wanted to do them separately. I didn't want to just type in all the words into the text box because I want to change the actual font for each of these and maybe the size of it and everything else. Okay, so I have all my words on here. Now I want to play with them. Alright, I want to change the fonts, I want to change the sizing, whatever I want to do. So, I'm going to highlight the first word and I'm going to go over to the edit panel. Now I'm going to go into my font and pick a font that I want to use for this. Alright, so I'm going to scroll down. And I have a lot of different fonts, so I'm just going to try to go in and just grab a few here. Let's see, there's a chalkboard font that I use. So there's some chalkboard font, so I'm going to pick chalkboard because that's the style that I use for this. Alright, so now it's changed that particular font, font to this, and I want to unlock this because I want to make this bigger. Alright, I may want to fill this up more, so all I'm doing is grabbing it in, until the way that I want it, and then I'll leave it there. I'm going to go back into this one, and I'm going to do the same thing. I may leave that A that way, um, but I know that I want this to be bigger. Okay, and then I'm going to go over to Prop, and I'm going to change this to a completely different font.
say I want this one to be Don Juan. Okay. So now that I've changed this, it's too big, right? But I can move it and manipulate it so it looks exactly the way I want by just unlocking it and dragging it until it gets to where I want it to be. So I'm going to do this for each one. And I'm just painstakingly showing you this because it does take a second. I don't want you freaking out when, when uh, it, Debbie, it's not working for me. You just have to give it a minute. It gets, it gets kind of, when it's working with the fonts, it just takes a minute for it to figure out what it's doing. There again, I'm going to unlock this one. I want to make it bigger. Okay. Now. For this particular one, I decided that I didn't want that image in that particular color, so I made it green, okay, on my sign. So you could change this so that it coordinates with whatever colors you're using for your wedding. That would be fun. Um, this one I'm going to leave the way it is, but I want to make it longer and skinnier. And I'm going to move this, and I'll just leave this one the way it is. Um, maybe stretch it out a little bit. Okay, so that's how you can manipulate your um, font. So that you can create your own, uh, you know, whatever it is you want to say. Alright, so now that I have this, I'm going to select this. Alright, I'm going to go to the Layers panel, and I'm going to hit Flatten. And guess what? Now this is a print and cut. Alright? Super, super easy. Uh, so now I'm going to, this is the cut file. This is the back evil part. The white is a cut file. The frame is a cut file. But this is now a print and cut file. Okay? So, see, it's got the little printer icon. So this is going to print out. So when I hit go, all right, so the first thing that's going to come up is that this is now a print and cut file. So I will send this to the printer, and it will print it out, and then I'll put it back into my machine, and it will cut out this piece. I'm not going to show you guys that part. You know how to do that. And then this is a cut part. So that's that back layer of the frame, and this is the easel part. And then it's going to cut on white. It'll cut out this. Now, this is a pretty intricate um, cut. I have been able to do it just using the regular cardstock setting. All of the cardstock that I used for my project was close to my heart. Um, cardstock, it's a great cardstock weight. It does, it cuts beautifully in the Cricut Explorer. And um, if you guys actually physically saw the signs, you know that it was um, stable enough to stand up, but they were also lightweight enough that they weren't real bulky. Anyway, so this is the first part of the video, and this is how I made the sign. And now you'll see that I grabbed this piece and I added it to the top of this when I assembled it. Okay? And that covers it, and so I just added some adhesive on the back of this and glued it on. I am going to film a second part of this video uh, and then attach it all together to show you the pieces and then how did I actually put it together so you understand the steps of putting the easel together. Um, that's it for right now. I will be right back. Okay, back for part two. What I wanted to show you was I have all the pieces are now cut and ready to assemble. Okay, so this is the print and cut piece, and it looks beautiful. Now I use an HP NV5660 um, printer, and it printed beautifully. And that's how I got this to look like it's black with the white white writing on it, so it looks kind of like that chalkboard look that's so popular right now. And then you'll notice that I did color in the the and sign, and then I had actually added the hashtag Cricut everywhere on the bottom. So if if you're doing an event, make sure you add your hashtag. Um, people are you know putting the uh, event photos on Instagram or whatever, and that's a great way to remind them of what you want your event. Um, hashtag to be used. 
Anyway, so this is the print and cut piece. So you can see it was a white piece of cardstock. There again, um, I use uh, for my print and cut pieces. I actually use the Georgia, the Georgia Pacific uh, premium cardstock paper. It is a hundred and ten pound weight. And it's bright white, and you get 150 sheets of it for, I think it was like 562 or some strange number like that. And I buy this at Walmart, and I tend to pick up a couple of packs at a time because I do quite a bit of print and cut. So, that is what I did for the, the insert piece, alright. Then my frame, this is the frame part that cut out, alright. And then this is the intricate piece that cut out. And as you can see, it cut really nicely. It's very clean, beautiful, beautiful cuts with the Cricut Explorer, uh, doing all these little intricate cuts. And really, I just popped it up out off the mat. And I even just kept it on the mat so you can see how absolutely cleanly that it really cut. And I was just able to pull it away. All right. So... This is the piece that then I will adhere to the top of this frame. Okay, and I'll line that up here. And I just use, um, I use my tape runner and, and adhered that onto here. Um, so I just did it around the sides here. And then if you wanted to put this down a little bit more, you can use um, a Zig 2 way glue pen too would be another thing that you could use to then, uh, maybe if you wanted to go around these more intricate corners to make sure it stayed down, you could use the Zig 2 way glue, glue pen. Um, so, I have this piece and this piece, so I would adhere these two together. Then I'm going to adhere, I'm going to put adhesive around the back of this, and then I adhere that down, okay, on the top, all right? So this is what this is what you end up with after you adhere everything. So you have this piece, and you'll see you have that white cutout because you see that um, now that I've covered this top piece with my word, this is it shows the back of that paper. All right. So this part is assembled. Now this is that piece that we cut that becomes the frame easel. Okay. So it does cut, it cut out really cleanly. And then it's got a score mark on here. So I did use the score tool. Um, and then you're just going to fold this over along those score lines. And then you're going to have this piece here. This piece also has a score line that's kind of right here where my thumbnail is. And I, fold, and I scored it there. So I folded that down. Now to assemble the easel part, you're going to put it like this, okay? There's a little notch here. Can you see the notch? See that better. So there's a little notch here that it cut out, and then that part folds down and goes here to the easel, so then this stands up. All right, easy peasy. And um, so that's how the front, how the how the easel part works. And then I just glued on the rest of my frame and let me see if I can show this. So remember how I said I made the, the frame part, um, the easel part five by seven and then my, my frame is actually bigger than that because I did that because I did not want I did not want to have to line up all of those edges on the frame uh, and have a chance that it would get off. And so I ended up making it just slightly, it's hard to tell with the black paper in it, here. Okay, I made it slightly smaller so that when I adhered it to the back of the frame, then what I end up with is that the frame is easier for me to adhere it together. And now my frame stands up. And this one's been smashed in a box, so give me a second. Um, but that is the easel frame right there. So you can see, I'll turn it around so you can see. So it stands up. 
and is ready for you to put on your table, tabletop, for whatever you would want to do. So that's how I made it, and I hope you guys enjoy the video, and I'll let me know if you have any questions. Bye. Have a great day.